Hey everybody, Brian Wesley Father here with the Unbreakable Podcast, the last one for the month of April. Woo-woo! Yay! We're a third of the way through the year on podcasts. It's kind of weird, but it's okay. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for hanging out with us, for yes. listening to the podcast, for checking us out on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go to uh, podpoint.com and look up the Unbreakable Podcast. Um, if you uh, want to, you can go anywhere you get podcast from but that's where we get our analytics from we'd love for you to go there leave a comment subscribe let us know that you're mm-hmm. paying attention to us that'd be really helpful thank you so much the other thing that you can do is you go to youtube so you can go to youtube.com backslash at the unbreakable family and you can get uh the content that we're putting through the podcast plus extra content that's on there yep. uh, for your marriage for your family for your life um and and when you're in there please like subscribe do all the things that you're supposed to do. Yes. Comment all the things. Uh, leave leave decent comments. Would you have had to delete a couple comments that weren't so you know like really? I think they're just trolls, but it's okay. You don't need to troll us. Just leave a nice comment. Yeah. If you don't like what we're doing, you can tell us, but don't be a jerk about it. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to swear at me or anything like that. Just public get, service announcement. There yeah, you go. We'll we'll be all right. So come like it, subscribe it, share it with your friends. Even yeah. Now let's let's go for there. Mm-hmm. So that that's at youtube.com backslash at the ampersand at mm-hmm. the unbreakable family. Yeah. All right. Well, last week we talked about rain because it's April. Yes. Know, April showers bring my flowers, and when in it rains, Illinois, it, pours. it rains in April. It's in great. the Midwest, mm-hmm. it rains from the <laughs> middle of March. That stops snowing. It goes right to rain. Yeah. <laughs> it's like snow. And it goes snow, rain, slush, yeah. mixed, and rain. rain. Mm-hmm. And then it rains all through April. And it's what I call, like I told you in the last um, podcast, last video, I call it the mud season. It's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, mud everywhere. Wet everywhere. And, and, and so and we talked about this in the last video, about how rain can evoke certain responses. Yes. You know, um, it can be negative. It can be positive. I'm going to talk about that today. How you respond to the rain in your life. Um, I'm thinking right now when I was in college and young, dumb, and stupid. Um, and yeah, I, I put dumb and stupid together because it was that bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we did things that were just dumb. Mm. Uh, I I remember. Uh, I'll, I'll start with this because that's how you respond to rain. Okay. Two, two incidents. Um, one. Uh, a buddy and I, there were like two or three of us, and and we were sober. We weren't drinking. I drank back then. Um, I don't anymore. Um, no, but doesn't. we were sober. But we went out after the rain. I don't think it was still raining. I think it was. Just, it may have been. So I don't remember. But it was really wet, and we went out on our campus, and we found places where the water puddles, and we went sliding, and slipping and sliding through the mud puddles in our t-shirts and shorts, you know, in March, April. When it's 50, 40 degrees yeah. out and you can get sick, but we don't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we went out because it was, it was a time to play. You know, it was mud season, but hey, let's go get muddy, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, there was that incident. Then there was an incident where it was a thunderstorm. And one of my friends was like, hey, come on, come on. So it was like three, three or four of us guys, and we went through the girls' dorm on the way and grabbed three or four girls. And we went out in the rain. I don't want to talk to the girls to go out in the rain, but we did. We went out oh, yeah. in the rain. It was a thunderstorm. So we're out on a certain part of the campus, and we're out on the, the football practice field and the softball fields, and we're watching the lightning rip through the clouds and rumble. And, and the rain, the main part had already gone by us, but we could watch it as it was going away. And I'll never forget, uh, it was like watching fireworks. Mm-hmm. We were watching all the lightning and, and hearing the thunder, and there was one where the lightning like rippled behind the clouds and like a strobe light behind mm-hmm. the clouds. And I never forget this one guy who I knew was not a Christian. But he's like, way to go, God. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we responded to, and actually that storm knocked out the power in town. Yeah. Everybody else was freaking out with the power being out mm-hmm. and we're out celebrating the storm. Yeah. What are you doing? When when rain comes your way, when the storms of life hit you, what are you, what are you, how are you respond? I'm think? gonna I'm gonna admit that I am not a lover of rain unless it rains at nighttime when I don't have to go out in it. <laughs> but um, my reaction to it is usually very negative, right. and so I have to be careful then when spiritual things happen rain wise that I don't react the same way very in the good. spirit because you want to respond 
positively toward the Lord, <laughs> right? Not um, reject what He's trying to send you. So right, no, that's really really good because there is a um, pattern that you create on how, and I'll, yes. I'll attest that my wife hates the rain. Yes, I do. Hates it. So well, I hate we, to go out in it. And say we have to go grocery shopping, and we have to go run errands, and she's like, "What?" So my job that day is to keep her as dry as she possibly can stay dry. <laughs> Drive her up close to the door, the door yes. umbrellas. Go in for me, come back out, you know. Whatever. whatever. <laughs> I, am, I I have to get all wet so she stays dry. And it's okay as part of my service to my wife. Yes. It, I don't mind that. He's very good. I don't know that, but yeah, sure, why not? And so we, we do all that, and knowing that um, that's just her response. And, and isn't that your response sometimes? You wake up and you, you, you check on your phone or your tablet or your internet, whatever you're checking on, um, or you have a, a weather report that it gives you a notice, mm -hmm. or you just do the old-fashioned way and look out the window, mm -hmm. right? And go, oh, God, it's gray out there. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. And you set the tone for your whole day because mm -hmm. you're upset because it's a little drizzly. And it's gray. Then you walk outside and the rain's not warm. It's kind of cold. And then you get matter. And then you got to dry it. And you got to run the wipers. And one of them doesn't work right. It streaks and doesn't quite do it. Oh, and by the way, it's the one that you need when you're driving in front of you. Um, the truth is that life is not all lollipops and roses. And, lollipops and roses? Yeah, I no, like that. That's like just a mixture of every good thing. I don't know. Life isn't always good. Sometimes it's gray. Right. But how are you going to respond to it? Yeah. Because your response changes everything. Yeah. Are, are you going to allow the rain to keep you negative? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to take the rain and say, hey, I can, I can use this. Mm -hmm. You know, put out a rain barrel to help irrigate my plants mm -hmm. in my garden. Yeah. I can, you know, whatever it is I'm going to do with it. Because you can take the rain and use it for good, just like God can. Mm -hmm. um, because not everything that rains is God. Um, God does pour out rain. Mm -hmm. um, like we talked about in the last video, in the last podcast, he, two reasons. One, he pours out rain to bless, mm -hmm. and two, he pours out rain yeah. to judge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we tend to think all rain is judgment. <laughs> we just tend yeah. to think that way. And it's not. No. God wants to overwhelm us with his goodness. So sometimes it's pouring rain. And I have to go out in it, and I don't like it, but I have to get focused on this is going to make things beautiful. Right. This is going to help our yard. It's going to help our yeah. uh, the crops that are being grown in our region, in yeah. our area. We love our farmers. We are, we are lovers of driving through the country and seeing how the crops come up yep. and how they flourish and then how they come back down. You know, so, And the weather, the rain helps all of that, but you have to have a vision for what's coming not just where you are, not just the rain where, right where you're at. Yeah. You have to see what's going to come good from what is happening right then. Yeah. And, and we want to tell you that when God rains on your life, because um, the judgment reign of God was really reserved for really, 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 really bad people and really evil time. Um, and we can look at that, uh, which we did last podcast, mm -hmm. last video, uh, with Noah. That was... And that's the only time he's done that. That's the only time God has used rain to judge. And he actually said he's never going to use rain to judge again. Yeah. Uh, even when Jesus comes back to judge, not using rain. Using other stuff. <laughs> so, not using rain. There are times throughout the Old Testament where the rain is stopped. Right. The heavens are closed. Yep. And it is in response to evil, usually. Yeah. And if people repent, then the heavens open back up and yeah. God pours out the good, the good rain. Um, but thank goodness we got Jesus, and Jesus came and brought grace to yeah. cover all that judgment. Yeah. And um, when we receive Jesus, when we move in the um, the blessing of God because of Jesus, because of what He's done for us, then we don't endure judgment reign. Right. Um, because we're covered, we're, we're kept from that. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. And, and what we're trying to tell you today in this particular podcast and video is prepare yourself for the blessing of rain. Yes. There's an old hymn 
that's called the showers of blessing. Showers of blessing. Showers yep. of blessing. He went. I I don't know all the words. Um, <laughs> I remember it because I a grew long up in, time ago since he sang it. A really long time ago. Um, but that that was a song that we sang as in our church when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I don't remember all the words. But the whole point was, it came. Showers yeah. of blessing is what came. So mm -hmm. God wants to bless us and overwhelm us with His goodness. Yeah. Um, you know, I I just even from we just did the other video and uh, other podcast, and I'm thinking to myself, we we just need to prepare. For the overwhelming goodness of God, yeah, and our mindset has to be changed mm -hmm. that God actually is good mm -hmm. and He's not looking to damage yeah. me or harm me. He's actually looking to do something in my favor, right? To help me, to move me forward, to increase me, right? Um, you know, we we look at that. Um, maybe you have a health issue, and, and and the rain of life has hit you, and you're dealing with a very severe health thing. Well, God can rain on you and turn that around. Mm -hmm. He can turn that around in an instant. Yeah. Um, all the time. I, I've seen people, even people who aren't Christian who just were determined yeah. to win their battle with whatever it was that they mm -hmm. were fighting. Yeah. And and um, there's a there's a uh, basketball sports broadcaster who's fighting cancer right now, and and they have a commercial with him uh, on. One of the sports channels, and he's like, "I am going to beat this. I am going to beat this," and so he's taking the, the hard reins of life and saying, "I'm I'm going to win this fight," which is, you know, amazing. But now take that same attitude and add God to it. Mm -hmm. So now you're not just fighting by yourself. Yeah, you're fighting it with someone who's fighting yes. with you and for you, yes. and can do better and more for you than you can on your own. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah. God wants to bring blessing to your life. He wants to heal that. Maybe you're struggling financially and you don't have as much income as you mm -hmm. as much money in the bank as you, you think you need. Mm -hmm. um, God can bring blessing to you that sure. way. There's been many times where we've been really lacking financially mm -hmm. and then God would step in and do something yeah. uh, miraculously to to put us back on track mm -hmm. and do things. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to add to that to that um, God shows me things in pictures often. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things he showed me a long time ago um, was our home, like a, a picture of our house, and then um, the rain droplets coming down on our house, and each rain droplet had a word in it of blessing, favor, goodness, um, health, wholeness, you know, just all yeah. the abundance words, all the words of the good things of God. And so the picture was just the rain coming down with all of God's good things in it but coming over our house and watering our life, our home. And so that always helps me think about what God's doing with the rain. That's good. If I think of that picture also spiritually, those are the things he's doing. He's pouring out all of his good things, yeah. his health and his finances and, yeah. and um, blessing on us. Um, and, it, and it saturates our homes. So That's good. I wanted to add that. There you go. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got that out of yeah, it. Got that you, out. You think Okay, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, you're good. You got, got the thought in. Got that so, thought so in. So you're yeah. happy? I'm happy. Sorry. So, so the last video we did, the last podcast, she had a thought like that, and then she didn't jot it down, and she forgot it, and then she was mad. When we so got now done. I'm saying it, so, so I don't forget So now she's interrupting and telling me what yes. her thought is, which is what I told her to do, so I'm really proud of her. Um, that has nothing to do with this podcast. <laughs> it has everything to do with us. Yes. Um, so... The, the bless the rain's coming to bring blessing. Yes. Um. And, and but you can take a blessing and turn it to a cursing. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's on you, not on God. Yeah. Um. And, and so, for example, when the rain comes, um, and begins to and we've just hit that season just recently. Like it's raining right now as we're talking to you, just slightly. I think it is. Looks like it. I'm looking out a window over there. It's dark anyway. It, it's, it's gray. Uh, it's not ugly, ugly, but it's gray. It looks a little wet out there. Um, but when it started, our, our lawn, we have about three acres here that, that uh, most of it, the lower two acres I have to mow. It's awesome. Um, and so um, just three weeks ago, um, looking at it, and it was just coming out of winter. We hadn't hit spring really yet. And so the grass was really low. It was kind of brownish, um, not brown brown. You know, we don't live in Texas or 
New Mexico, um, um, or Arizona. Don't dig a hole, just keep yeah. going. <laughs> <laughs> it was, sorry about that, folks. But, uh, it was kind of brownish, wasn't really green. And then we had a really good soaking rain. Uh, yeah. And there's, been, I mean, some rains come and they're like blow in like a torrential, they're a bad thunderstorm, blow in, blow up, and blow out like an evangelist. Um, this rain lasted all day, just softly rained. And then took about two days for it to dry back up. And I walked back outside and I looked, and all of a sudden the grass was green. Yep. And it wasn't another, we got to make another rain the next day. Mm -hmm. And then a couple more days later, I look out and it's like, hmm, glad I serviced the mower because now it's time to mow. Because it went from really low to time to mow. Mm -hmm. So the rain produced good fruit in the grass. It yeah. grew the grass. However, it also grew, I have thousands and thousands of little yellow weedy flowers called dandelions. Yes. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> so it produced the weed along yes. with the grass. Now, I can tell you that biblically, the Bible says it's kind of a Bible story thing, you know, a Bible account thing. Yeah. It says the wheat and the tares, there the good go. and the bad, grow together. Yep. So when rain comes, you're going to have good things grow and bad things grow together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they look the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When thistles begin to grow, they look like flowers. Then as they begin to mature, all of a sudden you see little spiky Prickleys. little prickies yeah. on there. You're like, I want to get rid of that. Yeah. And so you have to get rid of it. And so you have to weed it out. Same thing yeah. with the dandelion. You have to weed, and you have to weed it before it goes to seed. Yeah. Because when dandelions go to seed and they quit they being yellow, or they, they turn or white, <laughs> and they got these little bitty stems, and the white, and the wind hits it, and then it just escapes into the air, and they pollinate the rest of the yard. Yes. And, and so all of a sudden, your yard looks more yellow than it looks green. Yeah. Because the blessing of the rain got turned mm -hmm. to cursing because you didn't take care of mm -hmm. the weed. Yeah. You didn't look at the issue th at hand right. and, 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 and take care of it when you could. Now it's a bigger problem right. because you let it go to seed. You let it yeah. multiply. So what are you letting multiply in your life? What are you letting the rain... Are you mad? Are you bitter? Yeah. Um, if you're having a hard time with your relationship with a spouse mm -hmm. um, and life's raining, mm -hmm. are you allowing that to ruin your friendship and your marriage? Mm -hmm. Or are you making a determination to nurture what is good right. and weed out what is bad? Yes. What are you doing with the rain that comes to you financially? Mm -hmm. Are you panicking and just going, I'm going broke? Yeah. And you might be. But it doesn't mean God can't turn around in, 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 just, in just a moment. Amen. At, at all. Yeah. Um, you know, we, 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 like we said before, we've had that happen to us where we were, um, we, we, lo we love to have been at zero. Let's put it that way. Yeah. We were below zero. We love to have been at zero. And then we had someone come in and help us out um, that we weren't expecting. We, we had God give us vehicles when vehicles broke down. We didn't have money to buy yeah. a vehicle. Um, we get a phone call say, hey, someone told me that you need a vehicle. I've got one for you. Or we had, it happened to a couple times. And we had once where we didn't have a vehicle and, and um, the guy who owned the car dealership went to school with me and he calls me and says, hey, I got someone, he gave me a budget, you come pick a car. I've got about four cars out here that I in, inside the budget of this person said, so you just come pick which car you want. That's crazy. That's cool. It's a good blessing. The rain comes mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it comes from unexpected sources. It comes from places that you wouldn't even think right. about going to. Yep. We weren't thinking about going to the dealership at that point because mm -hmm. we didn't have the money to go buy a car. Right. So we didn't start that with them. So um, oftentimes um, God just blesses because yes. that's who he is. Yeah. And he just pours out a blessing, uh, a raining blessing. It has Sometimes, nothing to do with you. Yeah, it has nothing to do with you. But there is also a, a, a spiritual principle of being good soil yeah. and being prepared and being um, expectant for God's rain to come on you. And so a farmer knows rain's going to come in the springtime, and he prepares the ground. Yeah. He tills it up. He gets all the weeds out that he can. He prepares it for seed, and then he um, 
prays for rain and the Lord sends the blessing of rain. And so the same thing happens with our hearts. Yep. We can take time to till up the ground. Don't be hard hearted, mm -hmm. till up the ground. Good. You can get prepared for rain and you can then pray for rain and God can send rain because you've prepared for it and you're expecting it. And you know that you've planted the seed of his word or the seed of his good character yeah. or um, whatever in your heart and you're ready for rain. And that God sees that too. He does just bless because he loves you. He just blesses. But he also sees prepared hearts and says, oh, I want to I want to pour it out on that one. Yep. And so that's always a good place to be. Another point that um, I was thinking of while you were talking is that um, we have been given all authority over the enemy by Jesus. Right. And so even when the hard stormy rains come, we have authority over those. And we don't have to just put up with the negative, bad, stormy rains. Right. We don't have to put up with the tornadoes. We don't have to put up with the chaos that gets created in a storm like that. Because there is an enemy who's stirring the weather. Yeah. And he's, you know, coming against us by doing that. So we have authority to say, stop. Jesus taught his disciples, speak to the storm, speak to the whatever you need to speak to right. and tell it to stop yeah. and it or move or go or whatever it has to do. And it has to obey you. And so the same way with physical rain, yep. we can speak to the storm and tell it to calm down, yeah. be muzzled, you know, be silenced, come to peace. We can speak to that, but we can also speak to the storms going on in our lives yes where the enemy is trying to throw everything at us and turn everything into chaos and whip it all around us, we can say, stop be, in the name still. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we can stop the enemy and all of his onslaught and bring it back to peace. Along with that, there's still the element of we live in peace regardless of right. what's happening around us. So when we find that place of peace, that place of shalom, where you know Jesus said, I leave my peace with you. Mm -hmm. It's my peace, and I'm leaving it with you. The world can't give it to you, but I can give it to you. So we can live in peace yeah. in the middle of all of the rain, all of the wind, all of the storms, no matter what's coming against us, when it's that negative stuff that's being thrown at us, we can still be at peace because we trust the one who is Lord over all the storms and mm -hmm. over all the weather. We trust God and when we put our trust in him, we are hidden in him, in that secret place of the Most High God. And he's able to shelter us from every storm and keep us in perfect peace because mm -hmm. we stayed our mind on him. That's so good. And if you're listening to this or watching this, either one, and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. Good. That's the <laughs> right kind of peace because it says it's the peace that passes understanding. That's right. And so if you have peace, that makes sense, you know, because everything's good. The yes. money's good. The relationship's good. The family's yeah. good. The job's good. The car's good. Mm -hmm. You know, my health is good. Everything's good. You well, know, it makes sense to have peace. Mm -hmm. That That's understandable. Yeah. Right? It's when the bank account is at mm -hmm. $5 and some change. Mm -hmm. It's when, you know, you and your wife are fighting over which pillows to not mm -hmm. put on the bed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> or your baby is sick. Or, or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, the you and the boss are having an issue. Mm -hmm. um, you hate your job, but you got to go make the money. Right. Um, all, all the things of life that happen, but you can walk in peace. Yes. In spite of it. Yes. And that's the peace that passes understanding. So mm -hmm. that's what she's talking about. Yeah. You have a peace no matter what. And that peace comes from trusting. Right. The Lord. Trust Him with your life. Yeah. Trust Him with everything going on in your life. Trust Him to be Lord over it and know what to do to help you. In every situation. Yeah. Trust it. Yeah. And um, you just choose not to participate in the junk. Yes. You can choose. Say, I'm not going to do that. Yep. You know, I, there was a guy that I used to follow um, for business things and ideas. I haven't followed him for a long time. And um, there were recession and inflation and stuff. Kind of like what we have now. Um, but at the time, it's been years ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying, I just choose not to participate. Yep. And it's the first time I ever heard that. Yep. And it wasn't even from a preacher or a pastor mm -hmm. or a teacher it's no. from a businessman yeah you know i just i just choose not to participate i'm like tell me more yeah. <laughs> how's, how's that work <laughs> he's like i just make more money i just go out and work harder and i do more things and i choose not to participate in what's going on in the economy mm -hmm. i have my own personal economy and i'm like that 
was mind-boggling to me. Yeah. That was revelatory to me. Right. That you could even think about that mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. So I began to think about things differently. I so I don't participate in things that go on around me mm -hmm. because I don't have to. I choose not to be involved yeah. in those things because I'm going to walk in God's peace. I'm going to walk in God's yeah. blessing. I'm going to walk in God's will for my life. I'm going to walk in the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. not the kingdom of this world. Yeah. And so because of that, when rain comes, I don't have to react to it. Mm -hmm. I can respond to right. it. And there's a difference. Right. And my response may be no response. Mm -hmm. Or my response might be speaking the opposite. Yes. Or whatever. I, I can respond to mm -hmm. it from a place of peace. Yes. From a place of power. Mm -hmm. And from a place of knowing that God has my back. Yes. Yes. And that reminds me again. She's of, looking something up. I'm looking something up. I'm sorry. Um, it reminds me again of Psalm 91 and what God tells us about when we dwell in him. Yeah, that's good. We are choosing to dwell in the Lord. We're not choosing to dwell in the world's chaos, in the world's ridiculous things, in the world's losses or in their gains. We're choosing to be in the Lord, in God's place. Of safety yep. and it says if we will do that that he will cover us first of all uh -huh. but it also says that we don't have to be afraid of terror that comes at night we don't have to be afraid of arrows that are shot at us by day and the enemy has arrows that he shoots at us constantly which right. is why we keep up our shield of faith to quench those fiery darts of the Good. enemy we don't have to worry about <clears throat> the pestilence that's stalking around in darkness and we don't have to worry about destruction and, and um, you know, the people who come in and, and fire guns over everybody and the people who come in and blow things up and, and any kind of destruction or sudden death, uh -huh. accidents, um, traumas, t trucks coming at us when we thought that we had a clear pathway. You know, I mean, any of that stuff, we don't have to fear that stuff because we're That's in good. the Lord and we're depending and trusting on him. Though a thousand fall at our side and ten thousand at our right hand, it's not coming near me. That's why I can trust. That's why I can stay at peace, because I know that it's not coming near me. None of that stuff that the enemy is doing in our world today is coming near me. I'm hidden in Jesus. I'm hidden in the Lord, in that secret place. That's good. And so the storms of life aren't coming near me. I'm trusting God, and I'm watching it happen around me, but it's not touching me, because I'm safe in him. That's my sermon for the day, right there. <laughs> I think we should end it right there, because I can't top that. Can't um, top that. Okay. Not that I was trying to top no, it. No, I know. It, but it was really, really good. So, um, you can have peace in the rain. Yes. You can have peace in the rain. You choose peace. Whether the rain is overwhelmingly good mm -hmm. or overwhelmingly bad. Right. You can have peace right. in the rain. Because sometimes it, it, it hits you. I mean, <clears throat> if someone walked up to you today and handed you $30 million, that's an overwhelmingly good rain. But you can lose your peace. Worrying like, about what to do with it. What am I going to do with all this yeah. money and the taxes and the people who are going to want to bug me for money and uh -huh. you lose all your peace. Yeah. Or you could lose your peace getting all prideful about, look what I got. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm just all this. All and, that. Yeah. Or if you have $30 million and they come and take it away today, you could lose your peace. Yeah. You know what am I going to do? I have no money. Yeah. I have no stuff. And, oh my gosh. This is what... On either side of the spectrum, yeah, you can lose your peace. But if you'll center yourself in God mm -hmm. and think about Psalm 91 that she just read to you, mm -hmm. you can have that peace that passes understanding. Yeah, no matter if the rain is overwhelmingly good, yep, or overwhelmingly really bad. bad. Yes. So have peace in the rain, mm -hmm. and we will talk to you soon. We love you. Thanks for being with us on the Unbreakable Podcast, yeah. and we will talk to you very soon. Praying for you. Yes. Believe in God to bless you. Yes. And for you to have a great day and a great week and a great 2023. All yes. right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs>